Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, 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 hello. Is this thing on? Oh, hey. Okay, look. Oh, ho. Oh, ho, boy. Hang on. Hang on. Is it zoomed in enough? Oh, oh, beautiful. All right. I'm going to see if I can get it to zoom in right in the middle there. I'm going to see if I can get it centered on the screen here. Hey, love it. Okay, we've got it, ladies and gentlemen. All right, welcome. So let's start this stream again, shall we? So, this is Pac-Man. Hi, and welcome to a new series of live streams on this channel, which is called, uh, as you can see by the title, War Games with Pac-Man. Yes. Yes, as Squire would say. A very good title for a very good game. Um, or rather, stream, shall we say. And we're going to be playing some of my favorite games. And I thought we would start, boys and girls, we would start with one of the greatest war games I've ever played. In fact, it's my favorite. If I'm being honest with myself, Gary Grigsby's Eagle Day to Bombing the Reich. The simulation of the strategic air war in Europe. When I'm not flying fighter planes and dogfighting and doing cool shit, I am in fact strategizing in how to best make people like me fly around. And so, naturally, there is only one real game that does the strategic air war justice, in my opinion, and it's this one right here. All right, sorry, I was just testing the sound to make sure it's good. Anyway, we're going to play a campaign. We're going to play the full Eagle Day campaign. And we're going to play it as, well, the fun team. We're going to play it as the Germans. Now, the reason why we're playing it as the Luftwaffe is simple. Um, in this game, you plan and execute raids, and you have to set up the strategy Interception is not really fun, because interception is basically, I just send fighters up to engage the targets and then destroy enemy aircraft, right? I use my Spitfires and Hurricanes to fight off the Luftwaffe, yay, we win. As the Luftwaffe, you have the mission planning, you have the overall strategic goal of defeating the RAF, you have to do all of that shit yourself, which is the fun part of this game. So... Without further ado, let's get started. So let's fire it up. Oh, I've been wanting to stream this game for so long. Doesn't get enough appreciation, my guys. And here we are. Welcome. Yep. Because we're not... Uh, that's going to be an issue. Can I, can I do it with my arrow keys? Oh, I can. Awesome. So, as you can see, map. We have a map of southern England. Okay, cool. Uh, actually, I'm going to turn down the scroll speed a little bit. We're going to set scroll to medium. There we go. We're going to use the arrow keys to do that, because um, normally you do it with the mouse for putting it to the edge of the screen, but seeing as we're playing in wind node mode, that doesn't work. So... Sorry for the uh, seizure-inducing shit that's going on right here, but we're going to do it with the arrow keys. So, here we are. Map of Southern England. Actually, I'm going to try and get a better... Get a better look for you guys. Let's see if I can maybe go a bit... Like... Where they're at with this. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, no, nah. that'll do it. We'll 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 leave it there. We'll we'll improvise. We'll 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 go with it. We'll work with it. I'm just hoping you guys can see what I'm doing here, uh, which is you know it's gonna take some uh, fine tuning. It's so much easier if this just fucking streamed straight to you guys. Um, okay. I want you to see the command bar. Actually, you guys don't nearly need to see the command bar so much. You just need to see what I'm looking at in terms of the tactical side of things. So I'm going to move that up a bit so you can see what I'm selecting and so on. Because I'm going to be narrating what I'm doing anyway. So if I put this at the top of the screen, you should be able to see like the, ta the tactical side of things. Actually, I might move that down. Uh, is that good? Yeah. There we go. Yeah, that'll work. All right, basic. You you can't see the top command bar up the top here, but yeah, that doesn't really matter so much. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. This here is a map of Southern England. Our job as the Luftwaffe, as I'm sure you guys are well aware, is to defeat the RAF and pave the way for Operation Sea Lion. Granted, while historically that is pretty much impossible because the Kriegsmarine is nowhere near strong enough to actually execute such a stupid plan, we are nevertheless going to help our uh, embattled naval comrades by defeating the RAF and uh, making Hermann Goering look good in the newspapers, if such a thing is possible. Which it probably isn't, let's be real here, guys, but hey, we uh, we got to work with what we got, right? Okay, so here's how we're going to have to start doing this. So first of all, and this is first of all, we're going to need to start targeting their radar sites. We're going to we're going to need to start hitting radar stations. So first of all, we're going to set up a bombing mission. And we're going to set the primary target to Dover radar station. Now, these initial raids are pretty easy to plan, so you can't see what I'm doing because the top of the screen is barred off because I can't get this thing to run full screen in the stream programs. So, I'm a bit vexed. I don't know how to do it. But as you can see down the bottom, you can see all of the uh, impound points, all of the stats for the plan itself. So, what altitude the fighter is going to be at, what altitude the aircraft are going to be at, what the start time of the raid will be. What the inbound waypoint is, what the outbound waypoint is, what the primary target is, and what the base that they're forming up at is. So you can, you guys can see all of that. I'm inputting all the tactical information in a top, in a toolbar at the top. Um, but yes, we are going to be setting up a raid. So the primary target is going to be Dover Radar Station. We're going to set that raid for 6 a.m. Now the altitude for our aircraft is going to be a thousand feet because we're going to go in level. And we're going to go in with... Who are we going to go in with? we got a squadron of Stukas? Yep, yeah, we're going to go in with a squadron of Stukas. Now, normally we wouldn't use Stukas, like... We don't use Stukas for, like, serious raids or anything like that. But it, it's okay to use them for coastal targets, I find, just because they get in and out relatively quickly. Alright. So we're going to have... We're going to have an escort of 5,000 feet. So we're going to have Yagishvada 52. We're going to have first of Yagishvada 52 um, in the high escort at 5,000. We're going to have one section of Yagishvada 52 at 7,000 feet above and one at 10. Third Yagishvada 52 at 10. Alright, so that's going to be raid one. So I'm also probably going to add, can we add another set of Stukas? Yes, we can. So why not? Double down. If it's good enough to do that, it's good enough to hit hard. So that is raid one. So raid one takes uh, commences at 6am at, at an altitude of 10,000 feet. And we have fighters stacked up from 5,000 to 7,000 to 10,000 feet above that. So we have fighters at 15,000, fighters at 17,000, and we have fighters at 20,000. All right, so we're going to have that as our first raid. 
Now, the reason we want to stack fighters like that is due to the way that attacks work. Um, if the Spitfires are going to have early warning, and the Spitfires and Hurricanes are going to have early warning, they're going to be coming in from these airfields here, Biggin Hill, Kenley, and Hornchurch, and North Weald, if we go a bit further up. North Weald's up there. They're going to be launching fighters to intercept us from those areas. If that's the case, we really want to be heading down we really want to be keeping our stuka formations at least along the coastal targets primary objective initially as you can see here is to wipe out the radar net from here west prawl all the way up to west beckham we want this radar net to cease to exist if the radar net is down the raf will not be able to vector onto our raids will not be able to vector onto our raids until they have visual confirmation, which is until we hit the south coast of England. And they won't have direct RDF warning of what type of aircraft are coming in or what their altitude, speed, and direction are. Okay, Which means the RAF will have to mount standing patrols, which makes their, their pilots tired. It also burns gas. And it means their aircraft will be going under more air, air operations, under more stress, which means, the, in turn, their aircraft are going to be down for maintenance more often. So our primary objective is to wear the RAF down with really strong, with really, really, really strong operational concepts. That being, we hit them with... Basically, the best way I can describe what we're planning to do is we're doing Desert Storm early. Okay? Is what we're basically doing. And anyway, I'm going to close my Google Chrome right quick. Because my Facebook alarms are going off. Okay. Right. Yep, I can see you person in chat. I know you're probably an auto troll, but hey. Um, fucking why not? Is it real? It's obviously a game, Chief. Alright. I want to show all paths. So if I click the show all paths button... You can get it from the Matrix store, matrixgames.com. They sell high definition war games, high uh, fucking highly detailed war games rather. And they're very expensive, so I hope you can afford it. Now, with this with this operation it's very straightforward. As I said, we're basically doing Desert Storm. Okay, we're doing Desert Storm as the Luftwaffe. We smack down their radar stations and, and establish air superiority by basically fighter capping their airfields. All right? We force them to mount patrols. Our primary objective is to keep the RAF tired, to keep whacking down Spitfires and Hurricanes. We want to shoot down as many as we can in the air, or if possible, we want to shoot them on landing. We don't want to get drawn out into these long, um, sort of scattered attacks which don't do much basically we also want to space out our attacks during the day we want to sort of get in our attacks across a, across the whole day so we have one rate we have two raids at 6 a.m two raids at 10 a.m two raids at mid at um two o'clock in the afternoon and then two raids at four o'clock in the afternoon right we want to have multiple raids coming in all day every day every couple of hours or so so the raf keeps having to scramble its pilots over and over again and we just keep hammering them now, what's cool about the coastal targets is, right? What's cool about coastal targets, you can hit them with whatever you want. We're going to hit Rye Radar Station as well. And we're going to hit them with Stukas. Do we have more Stukas? Please say we do. We have more Stukas? No, we don't. Okay, cool. So our Stukas are going to be busy taking out Dover. But at the same time, we're going to have... What do we got? Legeschwader 1, which is what we'll use. Lergeschwader 1, or Lergeschwader. Um, Lergeschwader 1 with a group of Junkers 88s. And we'll give them the lead squadron. So that's 34 bombers. And again, we want decent fighter escorts. So we're going to have high escort 5,000 feet above them. Which will be squadron 1 of Lergeschwader 51. We go another layer of 2nd squadron of Lergeschwader 51. And finally, third layer, Yagishvada 51. 
and we'll chuck on... Is there a smaller bomber squadron we can chuck on? Yeah, we can chuck on 21. So we'll chuck on Elgish, Vardavon, and 2 for that. Okay, so cool. So basically, what we want to do is we want to have a stack of fighters at multiple altitudes, as you can see in the setting, right? You've got fighters at multiple altitudes. They're all at different altitudes over the top. So highest, second highest, third highest, etc., etc. You have them stacked altitudes, which means if the British engage us, they'll have to attack the bomber stream. If they attack the bomber stream, one group of fighters will attack them. If they engage the fighters, the next set of fighters above that group of fighters will engage them. Basically, the Brits have to come in at 25 to 30,000 feet, and they have to go through three layers of fighters before they can get to the bombers. Which, of course, yeah, nah. Not fun for the old Brits. Now, to pan over to the western side here. At 6 a.m., we want to hit Ventnor Radar Station. The Ventnor Radar Station on the Isle of Wight. The primary low-altitude radar station that spreads out over the Central English Channel. We want to hit that, which is going to be important to take out. Because we want to kill that, because if we hit this area, is really easy to knock out from radar. Eventually, you can make it so the RAF don't even mount patrols over this way, and you can wipe out all the factories and power stations and port facilities on the south coast. Makes it really nice and handy. But first, we're going to hit Stuka Geshvada 2, commanding unit of Stuka Geshvada 2. Actually, can we get someone better than that? Isn't there a better one? Oh, dude, they've added in the Night Bomber Squadron. Oh, I didn't know they put that update in. I downloaded the latest update. Fuck yes, we can do accurate night bombing with Knickerbine. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's fucking sick. I love it. All right. Okay, that's just me being a nerd. All right, so... Stab Geshvada, uh, Stab Stuka Geshvada 77, which we will use. Add Bomber, and where's the Stuka Geshvada 77? There we go. All right, so, and again, fighter escorts. We want high escort at five. No. We want high escort at seven. And high escort at 10. And you know what? Because we're in the western side, I'm going to have the high escort be young, uh, Messerschmitt 110s. Because the 110s need to be up high. They're not very effective otherwise. Okay. So those three raids right there are our 6am attack. Okay. We don't have much. We don't have much bang for buck at the moment. We don't have much bang for buck in terms of like... Uh, Fighter coverage on the Western Front. Actually, that's a good point. Let's let's get my boys right quick. There's a squadron. There's a squadron of one and nines up here. That's a bit awkward. All right, but we we got them in the end. That's a bit of a visual glitch there. We're gonna bring these guys. These guys. These guys. I bring them back down over here. And attach them to Jagd, uh, Jagdfliegerführer 3. And chuck them right there. Just to have another squadron of fighters on the Sherborg Peninsula. Just in case we need to mount. Because we always, like... I always move that spare fighter wing down here. Because they're not going to be doing anything in fucking Denmark. Not like the Brits are actually going to be doing anything down there. Alright? So. What we also want to do at 6am is... We also, actually, what you do is 20 minutes after the flight, the flight goes out, is another little tactic we do. So 20 minutes after the initial flight takes off, we send out a fighter sweep. We send out a fighter sweep over a particular area. Okay. 
All right. Which we're going to put a fighter sweep over the Biggin Hill airfield. And we're going to send number two, number two Geshvada of Yagishvada 26, or number two Grupa Yagishvada 26, second wing. All right, and we're going to send them out there. All right. Now, what we're also going to do is we're going to send a fighter sweep with the same objective. these airfields here. No, no, no. Sorry about that, guys. A surprise father appeared. All right, so where was I? Uh, yes. I swear, da as dads get older, they start whinging more, which is kind of ironic, really. Anyway, let's have a look. So. Let's see. Alrighty. What do we what do we got? What do we fucking got? Alright, we have got ourselves. Love how like one thing gets distracted and it just like derails the whole stream like I'm in the flow, I'm going through things and then oh hello, hello surprise father arise. Surprise dads, so they ruin everything. I mean it's nice to have one though. There is that. A lot of people don't, aren't as lucky as me to have a dad, so there is that. Anyway, so we've got a fighter sweep set up the mo over the main fighter bases in each sector that we're attacking, and they take off 20 minutes after our raid launches. So the interceptor force that intercepts our raid will be strafed when they're on landing. At least that's the hope, anyway. Anyway, now it's time for the next phase. So... Here we go. Nine o'clock. We're gonna we're gonna set the raid time to nine o'clock, altitude to ten thousand feet, and we're gonna hit four S radar station. Four S radar station. And again, we're going to pick an experienced unit to go on attack it. So what I'm gonna use is I'm gonna use KG seventy seven. And we're gonna add a bomber formation. Number one squadron, KG-77, right? which gives us 39 bombers. And we're going to add fighter escorts. So, and again, same thing before. First, Yagishvada 54 and the command element of Yagishvada 54. Then we go 7,000 feet. Second, Yagishvada 54. And then finally, 10,000 feet. Yagishvada 54. There we go. All right. And that's at 9 a.m. And same thing applies. We go Airlight Radar Station. 9 a.m. as well. Pick the most experienced unit to lead it. So in this case, where are we at? Dornier 17s. And we'll take the stab element, the command element of... Kampfgeschwader 2, 
gives us 33 bombers. And again, fighter escorts. So, third Yagishvada, 26. And then we'll go up again. Number one Yagishvada, 26. And then finally, one of Yagishvada, 3. All right. Actually, no, we'll take Yagishvada LG2. There we go. 9 a.m. Same time, we set up a raid at 9 a.m. over here. So there we go. We'll do worth radar station or polling. Now we'll hit polling radar station. I think polling's a bit better. Okay. And we're going to pick the inbound point from Cherbourg. Okay, because that's easier for us. Easy for the fighter escorts to do. And again. With polling, because it's so far away... We want to do it with KG-54, I reckon. We want to do it with Junkers-88. We don't want to do it with Stukas, because Stukas are going to get murdered if they try and fly that distance. Because they're too slow, and they're going to get wrecked on the way back if we send them out too far on their own. So we're going to send them in with JU-88s. going to give them some fighter escorts, so we're going to give them... JG-27. And again, we're going to give them one top cover flight of Messerschmitt 110s right up the top. Okay. So, we're looking good so far, boys and girls. We're looking good so far. We've got four radar stations targeted on the eastern side, two radar stations targeted on the western side. What we're also going to do is organize night bombing raids on these radar stations as well, the ones that are a bit further away. That will be the first phase of attacks. Will be will be attacks on the radar stations. Okay, that's the first phase. We basically spend the first day of Operation Eagle Day wiping out the British radar net. Once we wipe that out, we're going to be able to start grinding the RAF down. Now, I'm going to be a bit of a dick, and I am going to work my fighter pilots to the absolute bone. Like the fighter pilots, the Luftwaffe's fighter pilots are going to have a rough couple weeks, guys. They're going to be flying double duty. They're going to be flying to exhaustion, basically. Purely because we're just going to have to keep up the pressure. We're going to have to use our superior numbers. And we're just going to have to drive home as many fighter sorties as we can. That's our objective. If we can run as many fighter sorties as we can, we're obviously going to bring down the RAF's readiness. And eventually we're going to out a trip them we're going to kill as many of them and more of them than they are killing of us and if we do that we win i know that sounds simple but really as doubting so famously stated they needed to get a victory rate over the germans of at least four to one to have any chance of beating them which they achieved and therefore beat back the luftwaffe the luftwaffe also made some terrible mistakes but anyway i may do a video on that at some point if i ever get a chance to um talk about the Battle of Britain in anime form at all. I think Strike Witch is really is the only one I can do that on, and you know, maybe maybe if I do a uh, a Strike Witch's bio on Dolphine Galand, maybe I'll do that one of these days, if I can find time. But the Azure Lane series is proving to be really popular, so I think I'm going to focus on that for a while, because writing about old ships is fun. I really do enjoy that. The polling radar station's got a raid, so... Fighter sweep time. Alright, and we want to go get a fighter sweep going. Yet again, we're going to set it for middle wallop. Roll point here. Middle wallop's a good place to hang out over because that's the main fighter base in this area. And Yagishvada 53 will head out that way. And for us, again, Biggin Hill and Kenley. 
I might actually strafe Kenley itself and then strafe Big and Hill as well. Because that might be worth doing at least, just in case I need to really start putting the hammer down. I think I'll send in one first group of uh Yagishvada three to do that. And I'll send I'll send the command element along for that as well, I reckon. Yep. There you go. We have a large flight of fighters coming in uh, just after the raid. Because if, if, if nothing else, it'll try and catch them on landing. But if it doesn't manage to do that, at least we'll hit them in air-to-air -air combat after they've lost height um, tangling with the escorts for our bomber raids. We, we don't need to worry about tiring our pilots out too much. Because they're basically heading over the channel, mixing it up with the RAF for a little bit, and then fucking off home again. And if we're going to keep hitting him at three hour intervals, we're just going to slowly grind and grind and grind and grind and grind. So that's what we want to do. Okay, so next we want to set it up for 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so it's 12 o'clock now. And we want to hit Pevensey radar station. So, Pevensey Radar Station, what do we want to hit for this? Well, we want to use a more experienced Flieger Corps, of course. Now, I could use the same Bomber Squadron twice, but I don't want to do that, because we have enough bombers where we can just freaking, as they say these days, I believe, just send it, as it were. I only need to use one bomber flight per target, really. Um, they only need to do one mission a day. The fighter pilots are going to have to pull double duty, unfortunately, because we don't have enough fighters to actually escort all of our raids successfully. So we're going to have to get our fighter pilots to do double duty. But, you know, realistically speaking, that was actually more historically accurate for the Luftwaffe. The Luftwaffe often did do two or three flights today. Sometimes RAF pilots would end up doing five or six. So, you know, hey. But this is what I'm talking about. Basically, Yagishvada 52... We'll fly two missions today. And that's going to wear them out. So there we go. Alright. That's the midday mission there. And... Yeah. As I said, I'm hoping the... Um, I'm hoping the attrition won't be too fucking brutal on the uh, on the fatigue of the pilots because we really don't want to wear them out too much. But at the same time, as I was saying just before, the fighter pilots, I don't really have a choice but to do that. We're going to send in KG-1, I reckon. Actually, no. We got KG-4. KG-27, maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. KG-27, Heinkels. Bring in some Heinkels. Some good old-fashioned HE-111s. I do love a good HE-111. It always always uh, gets the old uh, Luftebona going a little bit. Yeah, that's a technical term, you know. It's just such an iconic, and if I may say, evil-looking aircraft. So I, I do quite love the thing. Alright, so we'll have JG-2. And 7,000 for JG2. And a 110 squadron on high escort because I feel like, you know, we want to make use of our 110 squadrons to a minimum extent. And they want to be the top. They want to be the top escort. They are top, top cover. They are all the way up there because we don't want to. We really, 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 really don't want to be sending in the 110s on their own. They need to have the most altitude, the most speed, and they need to have a lot of 109s between them and the Spitz. Their job, basically, is to wait for the 109s and the, and the Heinkels to get engaged, and then the 110s will drop in in one massive force and blast away any poor, unfortunate Hurricane who's not paying attention, which is what we want to do. We don't want to send them in. We either want to send them on low-level strafing attacks on the coastal airfields, or we want to... Uh, we want to sort of keep the uh, RAF looking above them because that's that's the killer. 
Altitude, altitude is life. Ask any fighter pilot, virtual or real, and they'll tell you the same thing. Altitude, my friends, is life. So let's get stu uh, Stukugeshvada 2 up, and we're going to bring in... Do we want to bring in the whole squadron, or do we want to bring in the whole crew? Yeah, let's bring the whole... Why not? Fuck it. We'll bring the second Stukugeshvada. Why not? And some boys. We need some uh, fightery boys, which we will get. Uh, Yagishvada 3 again. Yagishvada 7. And then up high, yet again, we're going to use Yagishvada 2. Z uh, Zero Geshvada. One of the Zero Geshvadas. LG1. We'll get Zero Geshvada LG1. We'll get them on top cover for that raid. Okay, and Fighter Sweep again. If there's any fighter sweeps left that we can do, I don't know. Probably not. We'll see. Probably none left. No, none left there. We should have some in the east coast, though. Down by the eastern side. We might have some. Yeah, we do. We've got Yagish Fighter 3. We'll send JG3 in there. Um... No, start time, altitude, and target point, like, inbound. Do a really secure this route, just to strafe limp airfield on the way past. Just because it's a good thing, then hit Biggin Hill and then hit Hornchurch. Because we want to hit all of the airfields on the way through. Hey, Martine! My guy! Welcome to the stream! And also, James, don't you worry. Our Welsh friends will suffer the wrath of the Luftwaffe at some stage. Don't you worry about that, James. Don't you worry. We will arrange it, friends. We will arrange it. All right. So let's review our missions so far. As you can see, we've got our mission times. We've got the fighter sweeps. We've got the bombers at 6 a.m. The fighter sweeps at 6.20. The bomber formations at 9 a.m. Fighter sweeps after. Bomber raids, 12 o'clock. Fighter sweep after. All right. So we're looking good. All we need is the afternoon raid. The afternoon raid will be, you know, just a basic one last raid that we do on the radar stations here, and that'll be it. That'll be good night, Irene, as they say. So fifteen hundred, so three p.m. The cool thing is, at four p.m. we'll launch our we'll launch our recon birds, and we'll capture. All of the main airfields. We're going to send recon. Well, that's the thing, James. That's the thing, James. You gotta, you gotta get priorities up, man. You gotta get priorities. Like this game here is expensive as fuck. I think it's like eighty bucks. This game, I'm pretty sure, because it's a classic. It's an old um, Matrix remaster re-release. But um, you don't need a very strong computer to play it. In fact, it's better if you have an old one. How am I doing, Martin? I'll tell you how I'm doing, Martin. I'm doing fucking fantastic. I, I've been wanting to stream this game for so long, and I'm like, yes. Now is the time. Now is the time. So we are... We're having a bunch of fun. Or we're about to have a lot of fun. These, these initial raids will either go incredibly well or incredibly badly. There is no in-between with this game. It sort of decides on its own how it wants to go. Personally, I'm feeling, I'm feeling lucky. Punk is what I'm feeling. All right, so I'm, I'm feeling relatively confident. However, you never really know with these situations. So we'll see how we go. In any case, I've got Yagishvada 26 going to cover this formation. Going to be okay. We're going to be good. 
Yagi Shvada 26 will be able to handle this. As you can see, we're doing two flights a day, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. The pilots can get refueled, rearmed. And we're going to hit one more radar station. What can we hit? Actually, I know what we'll hit. We'll hit this one here. We will hit... We'll hit Dunkirk radar station right here. And yes, there is a Dunkirk in England near Canterbury as well as a Dunkirk in France. It's confusing, I know, but hey, if we had the logic to understand Anglos, we'd be much smarter men, albeit more depressed men. But hey, being one, I can't exactly talk, can I? So, Kampfgeschwader 53, which we will send out, which is awesome, awesome. That's 32 Heinkels and fighter escorts. Again, we've got the Gucci gang. So we'll get Yagishvada 51. So we'll get Yagishvada 51 on this one. Uh, and yep. Up there. Beautiful. Gucci, Gucci. All right. And yeah, I think that just about does it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we probably don't have enough assets for one for a raid at in the afternoon over this side we'll give it a try though um hopefully radar station can we bring anybody yes we can we can bring some stukas stg 77 let's bring one set um can, have we got any fighter escorts yes we do so we'll we'll launch one more raid just for luck and we'll send in a fighter sweep after them because we will have it so we have jg27 covering our boys and three o'clock is like the last stage so you know what fuck it i'm gonna be generous i'm gonna send another flight of one and nines it on this bitch just cover them and you know what we'll send in a stab gishvada as well just to give him an extra couple of bombs on target so yeah i don't know if you heard that but my dad has just done something stupid probably Alrighty, no worries. So, let's have a look. Radar stations are all looking pretty good. So we're going to hit our fighter sweeps one more time, just for good luck, because... You know what, let's see if we can hit, hit North Wheel, shall we? North Wheel's always good to hit if you can, because, you know... And see if we can get... We can go around Margate, and we'll just go straight in. Got a set of fighters. Yeah, there we go. Yagish Fighter 3. They'll head on up there. Shit up North Weald. Always good fun. They'll be able to do one pass on the airfield, maybe. Maybe catch some hurricanes on landing. Who knows? We might even get really fucking lucky. We won't have a fighter sweep over on the left-hand side, because there's not going to be any fighters left to do it. Okay. Now. The final stage. Boys. Lay final stage. The final stage is... The five o'clock raids. The five o'clock raids are the end of the day, the very end of the day. Okay. And we're going to send in our fighter bombers on these raids. The fighter bombers are fast, as you can imagine. And they are useful. Very useful. Because they can go in quick and hit a target, and they hit it really accurately. Can I use them to hit this one over here? Probably. Let's give it a try, shall we, boys? Let's give it a try. Can I use my fighter bombers over here? Nope, because they're all based in the east. So, we're going to hit... Cannon, Cannon, Canwidden, Canwidden, fucking Canwidden. Ugh, it's in their names. I can hate them. Ugh. What are you guys thinking about the stream, by the way? I mean, I know it's not very exciting right now, but it will be shortly. Well, I might be lying. I might not be lying. You never know, really, with me. It could be either or. But point is, I'm gonna hit that. And I think I have enough fighter escorts for one last hit for the day. 
which I think I will do. Why the hell not? Can I can I lead a proper form a, a proper bombing raid on this target? Yes, I can. I can send in. Who have we got? KG4? No, I will send in. Who have we got here? LG1? 23 LG1? And some bombers. 76. Awesome. And some fighters. Love to have me some fighters. Yagush Fighter 54. Yeah, we are, Martin, we are. Um, because of how the game is set up, like, I can't... Because of the way this game works with it, with the window, it's like, I can't get OBS to recognize the top part. I want the thing to take up the whole screen. Like, I can move it down a little bit, but it won't... It's much difference. Because I wanted to get the whole bottom section in the picture... I wanted to get the whole bottom section in the picture because the bottom section has all of the actual information for the mission. It has the units I'm picking and shit down here, which I feel is more important than me actually punching it in. Also why I'm saying everything I'm doing just so people aren't fucking confused. <laughs> there we go. But in any case, you can see down here the mission plans. So, that is a 5 p.m. mission. God damn, it's beautiful. God damn, is it beautiful. God, I love it. Now, what's going to happen at 4 p.m.? And at 30,000 feet? is we are going to have reconnaissance missions. Not the most interesting things. I know. But they are important. Because they're going to be doing fun things. They are going to be flying over every fucking airfield in England just about. At super high altitude, all in one hit. Spreading them out. Nice and dandy. And we're going to find where the RAF is. And that's where we're going to prioritize our fighter sweeps. Because that's what we want to know. We want to know where the RAF actually is. Because once we know where the RAF is, we can shoot them. Essentially. Not the most interesting concept. I know it seems pretty straightforward. But it is inherently how it works. Because if we can find out which RAF bases are housing their fighters, we can then task a fighter sweep to strafe that field after our raids. Once the RAF radar network is down, we start pummeling these fucking airfields. Every goddamn day. We're going to be hitting airfields for days, my dudes. And that's the idea, really, because we want to sort of get across... We want to get across to the enemy and we want to be able to pummel their airfields into the dirt. And the more RAF fighters we shoot down, the better our chances. But the more we destroy on the ground means the less that they can come up in the air. Eventually, we want to achieve air superiority. We need to get the air superiority up to 16 on the left-hand side. So you can see the scoreboard on the, on the left-hand side here. That is our meter of how successful we're being. We want to get that up to... The level we want it at, which is... We also have it in sudden death mode, so there is a certain... There is a certain time frame where if the RAF doesn't have a certain number of aircraft ready to fight, it's automatically mission fail for them. So they have to... They have to marshal their resources and stay in the game and stay alive. But you never know. I'm hoping we do enough damage to them that we won't have to worry about going into the into the overtime. But yeah, 
you got to hand it to these plucky little Brits. They they have a tendency to hang in there when they really shouldn't. So one of those things. This is a bit administrative at this point. We're basically just going around clicking recon targets. But essentially, that's what we want to be doing, in all honesty. Okay. Actually, you know what? Nah, we don't need to go anymore. So here's the next part. Night bombing raids. Night bombing is going to be very important for us. Because it's how we're going to hit the rest of the shit we want to hit. And simply put, we're going to be using night bombers Hit the radar stations, which are not going to be very accurate, but night bombers generally have more, more accuracy against coastal targets. We're going to hit the radar stations at night, and we want to hope to God that we're effective. I mean, Bordsy Radar Station, AG3, St. Trond. Essentially, we're going to hit them as low as we can. So I have them coming in just above balloon height and just above medium anti-aircraft gun height. And we're going to have them hit them and hit them hard. And I'm using the Experience tab to... Make sure I'm getting the most experienced unit in each squadron to lead the attack. Okay. And... Want to hit the high street radar station and lower stuff. Uh, I think that should be enough for now. On that side of things. There's one other job we want them to do. I want to hit three airfields at night. I want to hit Biggin Hill. I want to send Heinkels in to do it. I want to hit Kenley, and again, I want to nuke Kenley. They have Knickerbine, which means they have the ability to bomb at night, which is good. And finally, Middle Wallop. Those are the three major airfields. We're gonna ha that that we're gonna need to hit on the first night, and we're gonna hit them with big old groups of boys. So, actually, I'm gonna hit with all of KG27 as well because I'm a dick. That's 59 Heinkels in the middle of the night. That's gonna be a fun fight. All right, boys and girls, here. We go. Alrighty, boys. The map is being glitchy as fuck, but it's an old game. That's to be expected. We're going to set the clock speed to two. Okay, the RAF are taken off. And okay, one hit a balloon cable. Another one hit a balloon cable. All right, it's not a good day. It's not a good day for the start. So the Hurricanes are bouncing a Stukas, and I just lost two Stukas. So there is that. So we're going to have to set the uh, following units on here. So I'm losing a lot of Stukas in the attack. I was expecting that. Okay, so 
as you can see our fighters are now engaging Oof. As you can see, there are a lot of fighters heading back to base now, right? And, th and our fighters are just taking off from the coastal fields now. So it's a pretty massive melee over the, over the English Channel, which we'll zoom in and have a look at. As you can see, there's like a massive fight going on over the English Channel, just near Calais. And it's pretty even on both sides, like, we're, we're, we're kicking and punching, like, we're losing fighters, they're losing fighters. It's pretty brutal, all things considered. So it's at 2 to 1 right now. It's at 2 to 1 right now. Although it's probably going to get a bit a bit worse in the second. Our casualties are going to be pretty high initially because the RAF is going to be full strength. As the campaign goes on, it's going to get a bit easier for us to operate and it's going to end up causing more damage to our British friends. And of course, the damage to their radar network will cause issues as well. Downside is, of course, we're going to be losing pilots and planes every time we lose an aircraft. Okay, so Yagishvada 26 is over the airfield right now. Okay, our 109 flight wasn't timed properly. Alright. The things are looking pretty, pretty expected so far. So it's 8 to 15, so it's 2 to 1 their way so far. So that's something I was honestly kind of expecting to happen. Oh, round two, here we go. Alright, so our fighters are gonna start are gonna start pecking away at them. So there we go. Yeah, it's starting to look relatively even at the moment. They had to take off to re-engage after, after we'd hit their launch our initial raid. So they're starting to take more casualties because they're coming up and attacking from below upwards. And the more damage we do to the radar network, the worse that problem becomes because they're going to be having to mount standing patrols. Alright. So the raids today are going pretty straight up. We're trading 1 to 1 right now, and at a 1 to 1 ratio, as long as we can do enough damage to them on the ground, eventually we'll win it. But, early days, my friends, early days. Okay. Alright, Spitfire damage. Dead Spitfire. Aerial combat over England's pretty fucking rough, boys, I'm telling you. There we go, boys! 109 attack Spitfire attempting to land. Got him. Oh, I was hoping that we'd catch the squadron on, on landing, but we didn't get lucky. Dang it. 
Alrighty, looking pretty even so far, boys, but the day is still young. It's not done yet. Here come the 12 o'clock raids, and the RAF are up again. Okay, it's looking okay so far, boys. Looking okay so far. Not truly amazing, not terrible. But it looks like we need to time our fighter sweeps a little bit later. We want to sort of get them maybe 25 minutes or 30 minutes after the flight, after the enemy, after the raid, rather. That probably looks like it would be a bit more effective. Okay, so here we go. The three o'clock attack is here. These enemy aircraft that we shoot down mid-channel, every aircraft we shoot down over the water is better for us. Because it means the pilots can't be recovered. Which is a good thing. Obviously. All oh, those Stukas are going to get massacred. It looks like their fighter escort didn't join them. Oh, that's not good. I hope those Stuka pilots have their health insurance signed on. Because that's about to get rough. Oh no, it looks like the 109s are with them, so that's okay. Oh boy. All right, here we go. Taking pretty pictures, boys and girls. Okay, then we lost one recon aircraft.
There we go. Okay, so the tactical fighter bombers have hit the target. Boom! Crashes on runway. Okay. The RAF had to fly a lot of missions just now. And so our night bombers have gone in. go it's tense boys it's tense there we go our night bombers have found their mark they've hit middle wallop in the middle of the night using knickerbine they've moved in and just blasted the airfield Oh, look at that, beautiful. Alrighty. So it looks like, boys, that initial phase of air operations over England is a draw. At least initially, for now. But it was intense battling today. So let's have a look at our let's have a look at our aircraft losses so far. So we lost twelve Stukas. So that was our number one casualty was Stukas. That's to be expected though, because Stukas get murdered. Alright. On the whole though, not a bad day. Not a bad day, actually. Quite a good initial phase. We need to time our fighter sweeps a bit better. But overall, pretty darn good. Damage done to the radar stations was pretty obscene. But what's excellent is that Middle Wallop got fucking flattened. Woo! Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. Absolutely blasted that airfield. Alrighty. As for these here... Most of the radar stations have taken a hit. At least these ones have. But there's a few that survived the initial onslaught. So let's have a look at the radar net. Okay. The radar net's still up. But if you look at it just here, there's a gap right here. So we can funnel raids, in, we can funnel raids deeper into this now. If we want to. But now, the next phase, I will leave for the next stream we do. I'll try and make this a regular stream that I do. Each turn. Each turn gets its own sort of stream, I'm hoping. Alright. Save that for the next stream that we do. But on the whole, she's looking pretty good initially. So, we hit Big and Hill and did a little bit of damage. We hit Middle Wallop and fucking obliterated it. 
So what we want to see is what have fighters, who has fighters, where they are. Kenley has fighters, Big and Hill has fighters. It looks like most of these Southeast English fields have fighters. Yep. Okay. These two airfields don't have fighters. Limpney and Hawking don't have fighters. Delting it does not have fighters. Manston does. Uh, 54 squadrons based at Manston, I think. Rochford doesn't. But So Northweald, Hornchurch, and Kenley. Croydonwood, Red Hill probably doesn't yet. Um, Gravesend does. Okay, so we now have our airfields targeted for fighter sweeps. So what I might do is we might time it the next the next stream we do we might time it so that the next missions the next fighter sweeps go through half an hour or 25 minutes to half an hour after the bombing raid the initial raid launches, um, to see if we can catch them either on the ground or while landing. Landing is the one we want to get them at. If we can get entire squadrons on landing, we can kill entire squadrons of RAF pilots, and that's lethal. Well, let's have a look at the campaign summary screen. So we have lost 17 pilots KIA, 8 pilots missing in action, and 11 pilots wounded. The British have 20 pilots wounded, 9 KIA, and 3 missing in action. So 12... 12 pilots, 32 pilots out of action. Look at that. All things considered, pretty good. Anyway, 